Hey there, how's it going? Welcome to Magic the Gathering for Advanced Players. I'm Matt Sperling. Today we're diving into some controversy about a play that some folks are calling angle shooting. Other folks are saying, hey, fair play within the rules. Let's dive in, get to the background. Player tweets, I'm sitting next to Zan Syed, round one of this PTQ. During his match, his opponent attacks his Oko with a Reality Smasher. Zan blocked with Gilded Goose. They finished damage, but the Oko stayed at five. On... Zan's turn, opponent calls, said, hey, Oko should be at two. Zan called the judge and argued the opponent never said anything, so Zan can assume trample damage was assigned, or f five damage was assigned to the goose, trample damage wasn't assigned. This kind of angle shooting is really close to the border of cheating in my mind, and it's kind of disgusting, scummy behavior that makes me not want to play. Immediately, people were asking, is this within the rules? Is it legal? Um, judges chimed in, yes. Right now, the defaults are you're going to deal damage to the creature that is blocking and trample damage. You got to say what you're dealing in terms of trample to a planeswalker, to a player. So a common example, let's say the reality smasher attack, there was no Oko, but it got chumped by a one, one. You can just let the one, one die, or you can say you take four, but you can't just assume that the opponent's going to take four. And maybe that default is wrong. We'll talk about that, but that's what the rules say. So Zan here within the rules, that's an important starting point. That's not even the end of the discussion. Here's the game state pre-damage, just to kind of bring this to life if, if, if you weren't following any of this. Reality Smasher is attacking Oko, Reality Smasher has Trample. Guild the Goose, O2 blocks, and that was, this is what the, game, the board looked like after damage. Um, player 2 did not say Oko should be on 2, or notice that the Oko wasn't moved to 2, until player 1's next turn. At which point they did notice and say, wait a minute, that's, that should be on 2. So, you know, is that is player two being scummy, being unethical, angle shooting, call all kind of synonyms for the same thing, more or less? What do you what do you folks think? Well, I mean, pause the video if you want and think about where you come out on this. So I've explained what happened. What would you do? What do you feel comfortable with? I think you know our, our intuition is an important component here. Ethical. Um, types of discussions often we can't really do a whole lot better than our intuition, but we'll try to unpack it anyway So okay, so if you pause the video Welcome back. Let's dive in the hundred dollar question here Is it scummy or angle shooting to not move the Oko die and then to call a judge if the opponent's confused on your turn? Um, so argument one there's I'm gonna present two arguments here on opposite sides and so I want to again inform those intuitions by talking not just about how I feel, but about different kinds of arguments. So this is an image of David Serlin, and this is his book, Playing to Win. I'm a huge fan of this book. Whether you uh, you know adopt this as a mantra or not, or you're just informed, at least you'll learn about how I think about some of these things. This is an interesting read for sure, and it's free to read online. You can read a summary that's one page. You can get chapter by chapter. Strongly recommend you go do that when you're done with this video, if you haven't read it before. But the premise of the book, really, or you know, or not even the premise, but the thesis of the book, is that you know, saying that things that are within the rules are cheesy, or you know, well, I want to, I want to be, I want to play a little bit, you know, without taking every edge. Well, that's not really how top level play goes. So you know, that's a horrible summary of playing to win. But we'll, we'll dive into what it means in this specific situation. And again, I encourage you to read it. So again, here's the situation we've got. So applying the kind of logic of playing to win that, hey, the rules are going to define, the rules of the game define what's okay, and we should expect competitive players to be pushing boundaries. Look, the rules define the defaults about trample. The default is you're going to deal damage to the blockers. If you want to deviate from that default, that's on you. Making sure opposing walkers have correct loyalty, that's on you as well. If you th just make an assumption. The rules tell you what you can miss and what you can't miss. And the fact that the rules here tell us that you can miss dealing trample damage means it's not necessarily the opponent's responsibility to point it out. Just like a trigger, that helps you. Most folks in our community land on the spot that you don't have to point out your opponent's triggers. Well, it turns out the rules make this an analogous situation. Now, I know player intuitions aren't the same, but the rules make this an analogous situation. And the playing to win philosophy is, look, although the rules and the ethics here could differ, I'm not saying the rules are the ethics, but the rules present the clearest and fairest boundary, the clearest way to draw that line. No other line you draw does better at avoiding free rolls and reverse free rolls. 
free rolls are opportunities for me to get edge when if my opponent wouldn't can't get the same kind of edge. Reverse free rolls is the reverse, right? My opponent can get an edge, but I'm not able to. And it turns out, if I'm playing some kind of good sportsmanship version of the rules, and my opponent is playing the rules, I'm getting reverse free rolled. Or you could say my opponent is on a free roll. Meaning, when this comes up for them, my Oko is at, is at, is at two. Because I'm, I'm just going to, you know, not try to, try to use the, rule, the default in the rules. When it comes up for me... My opponent calls the judge, they win the ruling, their oak was at five. So the same situation, depending on who's on which side of the table, the oak, my oak was at two, their oak was at five, I'm getting free rolled. Playing to win says the, the line that does the best at avoiding those free rolls is the rules. And the defaults that are in the rules are the defaults. And you wanna you wanna say something different, speak up. You aren't required to take every edge. Clearly, if you wanna give loyalty to opposing planes, you know, you you can do that. If you wanna give away your prize money, you can give away your prize money. But the point is, if you sign up to a pro feeding, a PTQ, or pro level event, expect your opponents, you know, to take every edge. Don't expect that they're necessarily going to let your planes walk, let you, you know, get triggers that you miss or whatever. So, you know, me as a pro, when I'm sitting down, am I always doing doing this stuff every time? No. But, you know, to the extent I'm not, I'm giving something up. And, you know, maybe I ought to reconsider that if I'm playing at a pro level event. Maybe I ought to do this more. Maybe, maybe this is a play that... I need to be thinking about more. So this is the argument coming from a place of playing to win and the rules really being the best defaults for, um, you know, for what is ethical. It doesn't mean, even in this framework, it doesn't mean that that's a good default. So five, if the defaults are bad, fix the rules. So let's go make noise about how, you know, trample shouldn't work this way. The Oko should be at two unless the player says, you know what, I want to deal more than lethal damage. If you look at the defaults in the online platforms, Magic Arena, Magic Online, the system, the computer that assigns a default damage, it doesn't assign more than lethal. Whether it's a, if it's a death touch creature, it'll assign one. If it's a just a trampler and without death touch, it'll assign that lethal damage, the two damage to the goose and the three to the oko as a default. So we need to figure out why is that? Why are the paper rules different than that online default? Is this the right default? And I think that. Hopefully this video, this may move the needle. It may be that six months from now, four months from now, whatever, that may not be the default. But, or it may be, and you'll have to, as a tournament player, you'll have to figure out what that is. So that's the playing to win argument. However persuasive you thought it is, it's not the only argument. Argument two, what I call kind of right from wrong. Common sense, golden rule, kind of, what does that mean? So again, here's a scenario just so you can have it in, in mind. People can take, how does this argument go? People can tell right from wrong. And people can tell that their opponent would rather deal 3 to Oko than 5 to Goose. So there's not really much ambiguity in what's happening in this game state. The Reality Smash is attacking, the Goose is blocked, you know, 95 players out of 100 are just rolling that Oko over to 2 because it can understand what's happening. And a kind of a common sense, you know, yes, there's a potential for free roll, but there's also just, hey, if, we're, if, if everyone's just playing with some sportsmanship, then we're all going to get our Oko on two and no one's getting free rolled. And that's kind of the world I want to live in. That's kind of a golden rule, common sense type of approach. Now the theoretical playing to win stuff I covered in the previous slide, that's all fine. That's all well and good, but you don't have to grab every single edge and your reputation is part of the game too. So if you, you know, part of what happened in this case is that player became the subject of a tweet and now a YouTube video and, and a bunch of other stuff, right? Probably going to be an article about this. Whatever. It's inter an interesting topic. That player's reputation's at stake. Other players are going, oh, you know, I wasn't sure if that was a scummy player or angle shooter or whatever. So, you know, those reputation effects are real. And the golden rule, common sense type of approach uses that type of thing to get us to a different line, line in the sand other than the one the rules draw. The rules are always going to have some kind of gap, something that's quasi-exploitable, some angles available. You can take the higher ground. You don't have to exploit these bugs. I mean, the rules are always going to have something. I mean, you can sit there and not say anything and be impolite to your opponent. Maybe that rattles your opponent. Well, is that the right thing to do? I mean, we're playing to win, right? Doesn't, wouldn't David Serlin say, you know, just don't be rude to your opponent as long as, you're not, as long as you don't cross the unsporting conduct line? And most of us feel like that's not the appropriate way to conduct yourself. So we're all kind of in the common sense golden rule in some issues. That's this argument. Sportsmanship isn't just about the rules. Um, so, okay, so this is argument number two, right from wrong, more of a common sense golden rule approach. And look, I've seen people on Twitter advocating both of these arguments. Argument one, argument two. 
which is the MTG for Advanced Players endorsed approach. So me having prepared this, having looked at those arguments, where do I come out? I'm with Serlin on this. Um, I kind of tip my hand and plug in the book, but you know, here's what I think. Don't get free rolled by someone following the rules. Magic's hard enough. It's complex enough. You're going to have to learn the rules. You're going to have to learn the defaults because you got to know how to protect yourself. And you got to know if a judge is making a correct ruling, incorrect ruling, do I need to appeal? You got to learn the defaults. You might as well use that as the way to protect yourself from the folks that are going to say, hey, I'm following the rules. Again, um, the ecosystem we live in, it's got some folks that even if a majority of players sympathize with argument two, there's more than zero. Plenty of players sympathize with argument one. If I don't want to get free rolled by those players, I better adopt that kind of mindset. Is it a race to the bottom? Yeah, it kind of is a race to the bottom. How do we address that? We get the rules folks to fix the rules. So again, the rules define the defaults. And then the last point, if those defaults are bad, it's our job to go to the rules committee and say, hey, you know what? It really ought to work like it does online where the goose is going to be assigned two and the oak is going to be assigned three as a default. And if that changes, the opponent will let me know. So that's where I come out on this issue. But I, clearly, I understand there's room for more than one take here. If you've got a take, you got some, uh, you know, a bullet point I didn't get, get to, throw that down in the comments. I, I look forward to that. Hit me up on Twitter, at sick of it. Hopefully, there'll be a conversation there when I share the video there. Um, always an interesting topic, these ethical lines. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoy videos like this, both the community controversy type of stuff and also the strategic, you know, look at my last video for some more just strategic, what do I do in this game state? How do I play this board? We're analyzing game states. We're talking about high level strategy. We're talking about the ethics, the community type of issues, but we're coming at it from a competitive pro play perspective. If that's the type of content for you, please subscribe.